G12 core value number eight is I love training and equipping. And training and equipping is our happy hour. Tend to your spiritual growth and take advantage of training, equipping and mentorings. Whether it be from our network mentorings, G12 mentorings, and even life class and school of leaders equipping chat, we have been given the greatest opportunities to be trained and equipped for the furtherance of God's kingdom. So be compelled to level up in your faith. Elevate in your life with Christ. Be part of the training process. And release your leadership potential. Join the network mentoring with our very own Pastor Godofredo Ambat. This will happen monthly from 6pm along with all our network churches. The presence of God will be so strong that my brothers and my sisters, when we go there, we are expected to work well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another way we can be further mentored and trained is through the G12 Mentorings with Bishop Oriel Baliano of G12 Philippines. To do this, to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill all the principle of authority, we have to align. Uh, you will prepare the word. You have to obey the authority. And of course, we are also privileged and blessed to have our monthly G12 UK leaders meeting and mentoring with Pastor Cesar Castellanos of MCI Bogota, Colombia. I pray that God will give you an anointing for multiplication where you could experience supernatural reproduction in all that the Lord has entrusted you. To stay updated with all these new mentorings, head on over to our Instagram and Facebook page and follow us for all the announcements and further details. Part of our happy hour is also the life class and school of leaders equipping track where we witness precious souls level up in the ladder of success. As we have transitioned to the digital platform, let us remain unstoppable for Jesus. So as we go through the process of winning, consolidating, discipling and sending, we'd love for you to join the journey too. Our life class and school of leaders are every weekend where you can learn the Word of God, virtually interact with fellow students through activities, be equipped in discipleship and be developed into a leader of leaders. to let you know that a new life class batch will be coming soon so if you're interested contact your cell leader or the person that invited you we, we believe that the, the best, best is yet to come it is very important that we should be equipped in everything that we do especially in evangelizing to other people he commanded us and gave us authority to make disciples this is our mission now. We do this out of love. That we in the leadership, in the life class, in the equipping process, that all of us, we will let our Lord Jesus Christ to reign in our lives. Because there is a work to do. There is a job to specifically do. But my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is telling us, if you do this, when you go, preach your lives, your gospel lives, win them, baptizing them, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey the promise of God. I will be with you until the end of the ages.
and blessed evening to all of us Bible students, avid Bible students. Welcome to Pagasa Center Bible Study during Wednesday. And to all of you who are joining us, thank God for those who invited you in. And I pray to God that you will gain something in joining us. And so my brothers and my sisters, I urge you that you focus, you listen, that we will get something very important because Pastor Allen Bakani from the Pagasa Center Philippines will continue the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And this is very important that hopefully you will be gaining strength, you are nourished, and that you will have a right position before God according to His Word. And so let us now pray. O oh God, our Father, we continue to honor you, we worship you, we adore you, for you are the God of all gods, Almighty Sovereign, the Creator of all things, the owner and sustainer of all things, while we are your creations. And we continue to humble ourselves and ask for mercy that you forgive us our failures, our sins, that tonight, Lord, as we gather to listen and to hear, Lord, we will gain something out of this Bible study. Help us, O God. Cleanse us, O God, from anything that hinders us from learning. Holy Spirit, we ask, continue to move among us, illumine us, teach us, and use Pastor Allen to facilitate the lesson of Ephesians chapter 2. God, thank you. We bless your holy name in Jesus Christ's name. And so let us worship the Lord. Let's join the music team. Hallelujah. My freedom 
Jesus I was a prisoner Now I'm not With your blood you Want my freedom Hallelujah For the cross yes, Hallelujah Thank you Jesus I was a prisoner Now I'm not Oh, with your blood you Want my freedom We thank you for salvation We thank you for healing We thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus Hallelujah Thank you, Jesus I was a prisoner Now I'm not With your blood my freedom hallelujah for the cross Blessed evening to everyone who are tuned in right now with our Bible study night this Wednesday. Uh, greetings to all. I am Pastor Allen of Pagas Center, Philippines. Hello, Hope, and hello, Pagas Center, United Kingdom. I just want, uh, first of all, to praise and thanks God for this privilege that for, again, this uh, second week of this series, I am able to share the word to you and also just want to greet our leaders and uh, 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 honor them this evening, Pastor Doc and Pastor Roche, together with their primary leaders and all those disciples and cell leaders in Pagas Center, uh, United Kingdom. A blessed evening to all of you. I hope you are still excited for our message this evening. Last week, we've started in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, yes? And we talk about uh, God's power in resurrection. And we have learned... Uh, many things and this evening we will be talking about the union humanity it will be on verse uh, verses 11 uh, to 22 in the same chapter Ephesians chapter 2 but before we start can I ask everyone to bow their heads and uh, close their eyes as we pray for our opening hallelujah father God Lord in heaven thank you for this evening that we are now gathered oh God to give glory to your name to know more about your uh, the word and to know more about you lord i pray that you guide us in understanding and listening to your word give us the knowledge understanding and wisdom give us the the heart our uh, open heart and open mind to receive your word and lord i know and i pray that everyone who will listen carefully and properly with this word will continue to grow uh in in their in their maturity in christ and in your grace oh god and we believe lord we will be uh, able to see, Lord, the the fruits of these uh, words that we are learning in our lives, O oh God. Lord, God, anoint us as we listen to your word. Guide me, O oh God, as I deliver your word this evening. And for those, everyone who are listening right now, Lord, I bless them in the name of Jesus. Continue to be glorified in our midst this evening. We love you. All glory belongs to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. So, are we ready? Let us start by reading the verses this evening. Let's start from verse 11. It says here, Therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those, peop by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. And in verse 12, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, 
excluded from citizenship in Israel and the foreigners, sorry, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And in the next verse it says, By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in verse 16 it says, And in one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which He put to death their hostility. Hallelujah. And then in verse 17, He came and preached uh, preach peace to you who were far, far away and peace to those who were near. For through Him, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word. Amen. In verse 19, it says, Now, therefore, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of His household. Hallelujah. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. In Him, the whole building is joined together and rises, <coughs> excuse me, and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him, you are too being built, sorry, in, in Him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word for us this evening. Can you please comment first? Yes. I just want everyone to be engaged this evening. Comment. Uh, hallelujah in the comment section. So, we could uh, be excited and everyone will be engaged with our uh, study for this evening. All right? So, if you try to notice the first verses that we have read earlier, it was talking about reconciliation. But it's not the reconciliation, the simple, the recon ah, sorry, just the simple reconciliation of man to God. This is a reconciliation of two groups of men. Right? What am I trying to say? So, Let's see, in verse 11, it says, Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body, sorry, in the body by human hands. So, there were these two kinds of people that uh, Apostle Paul was trying to address, right? Oh, so, sorry, was trying to talk about. Uh, Apostle Paul is talking to the Gentiles, those who are called uncircumcised. When we say the uncircumcised, these are the non-Jewish people. These are the people that are not part of the uh, what God uh, called them first in the uh, Old Testament, the chosen people. All right, <clears throat> because those who call themselves the circumcision or the circumcised people had the privilege. I had the privilege to become. Uh, called as the chosen people of God. They were part of God's nation, of God's people, right? These are the uh, the people who were born in the is Israel. These are the people who were part of the of uh, Jacob's, uh, 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 of, of the tribe of Jacob, the tribe of Israel. Amen? And they were, and because of their privilege, right? These people became arrogant. They had uh, develop this kind of wrong attitude because of this privilege they become arrogant they become disobedient to god because having this idea that they are uh are already saved by god they are all they will all, they will always find favor to god and god extended his mercy his grace to the non-circumcised people but these people right this this jewish people continuously right, uh, dismiss the non-Jewish people in the God's family. Right? So God made this uh, uh, reconciliation through His Son, Jesus Christ. Right? And it's just read in verse 12. So you will know what happened to the 
Gentiles. What what is to be a Gentile in their time? All right. Remember that at that time, right? You were separate from Christ, exclusive. I'm sorry, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners. Right? You are excluded from citizenship. You are a foreigner to the covenant of the promise, the Abrahamic promise. Right? That you will be blessed without hope. And without God in the world. My brothers and my sisters, if you will understand this, if you will try to understand this, meaning here, if you if you are separate from Christ, you are considered a Gentile. Right? You are not, you are you are a non-believer, right? You are like this one. You are you will be separated, you will be excluded from the covenant, and you are without hope because you have without God in your life. My brothers and my sisters, that's why it is very important for us to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to have Him to be in union with Him so that we would become part of His family, of His kingdom. Of, all right? I just want to give an emphasis about circumcision. Do you think up to now, circumcision is important? But we have to define what circumcision is. Yes, in the Old Testament, the circumcision was about the physical uh uh cutting up the skin all right it was made by human hands as what the verse has told us earlier but in our time this time all right in this uh uh generation right now when jesus came in our life all right there is a new circumcision that happened it's not this that it is not about anymore the physical circumcision it is a spiritual circumcision that you are removing your fleshly desires, right? your fleshly nature to become a spiritual uh, 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 a being that is uh, glorifying the Lord. So let's read in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. It says here, In Him you were also circumcised, right? with a circumcision, right? take note of this, my brothers and my sisters, and not performed by human hands, your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. That's it. Your fleshly nature, your fleshly desires was put off. They were cut off, right? Just like a circumcision in the physical. There was a, there was a flesh that was cut off. And in us, it was our fleshly nature, our fleshly desires, right? And it says, having been buried with him in baptism, if you remember Last week's message, we are union with Christ, right? It also says here, in which you were also raised with Him. Yes, we all know that. And again, it is through faith by grace in the working of God who raised Him from the dead. Amen. And let's continue in verse 13 in Ephesians chapter 2. It says here, But now in Christ Jesus, you once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Again, he was talking about the Gentile and the Jew, the non-circumcised and the circumcised. Here, the far and the near. Because those who were uh, uncircumcised were considered far from God. Those who were Gentiles, who were far, it says here, far away have been brought near. Hallelujah. We were now given the privilege to be near to God by the blood of Jesus Christ, we all know, but by His, but uh, that by His blood we have been cleansed, we have been forgiven from all us, all, all our sins and trespasses. Amen. We have uh, learned that last week. We were once dead. We were once far away from God. We were once cut off from our source, our Father God in heaven. But thanks be to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Through Him, Amen. Through Him we were brought back near by the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. That's why it is very important we, that we have this relationship in Christ Jesus that we know that we are uh, we are in a relationship with Him. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. We, we are considered to become to, to, uh, to becoming a child of God that we are friends of God as well, my brothers and my sisters. That's why what a great God that we have. Amen. Do you agree? Amen. That our God is as is so loving. He's so, so, uh, so great. He is this wonderful God that we have. Amen. But even in our trespasses, in our, 
even that we were sinners, even when we are dead, even when we are far away, God made a way so we could go back near to Him again and be in relationship with Him again. <clears throat> that is through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to share something this evening, just some points in about more revelations and a revolution. When we say revolution, a new thing, a new system, all right, that God created or God has done so we could become part of His family. That those, the non Gentiles, or sorry, the non Jews, and the uncircumcised could be part of His family and His kingdom. So let's read, all right? Number one point is in. Uh, in, in verse 14, it says here, He is our peace. Right? So, what does it, what does verse 14 says? I will read. For He Himself is our peace, who has made, alright, the two groups, one, and has destroyed the barrier dividing the wall of hostility. Apostle Paul was familiar with the setup or the, the how the temple in, in their days was made. There were the barriers. There is a place for the most holy, the holiest, the holy of holies, and then the, the, the place of the holy, and then there's the inner court and the outer court. But to and and the people and the Gentiles were not allowed. Do you know that? The Gentiles were not allowed to enter the temple. As as they come near to the temple, especially to the holy place. There, there, there was a sign, there was a poster uh, that was uh, attached or posted outside that when you come near, you will die. All right? But God destroyed all of that. All right? he, he destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Now when a Gentile comes in, in, in the presence of God, they don't die. All right? The flesh die, but they live. Hallelujah. Do you get my point, my brothers and my sister? The fleshly nature die. Because they will be li- li- alive again with their new, uh, uh, with their new life, they they will become a new creation. They will become a new creature, because God has made the two groups: those who were uh, privileged from from the early times that they can enter the holy place or the 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 courts or the temple. But now even the Gentiles have the access, right? Have the privilege to enter as well. Because through Jesus, through the cross, all right, through His blood, that barrier, that wall, that dividing wall was destroyed by God. So we are now able to enter in the presence of God through Him. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible is also telling, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is telling us that uh, no one can come to the Father except through Him. So there was no wall anymore. There is a bridge now, my brothers and my sisters. It is not a wall dividing us anymore from from God. It is just the gap, right? The gap of of our old nature because we were once right far away, and our bridge to Him is through His Son Jesus Christ. Are you getting my point, my brothers and my sisters? And it was already prophesied in Isaiah chapter fifty-seven, verse nineteen. If you will read here, it says here. Peace, peace to those far, right? The Gentiles and near. So God has already uh, prophesied that they will be reconciled, those two groups in one, says the Lord, and I will heal them. Hallelujah. What a great word, isn't it? And again, in, in, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 and 29, there's a verse about the Jew and the Gentile. It says, There is neither... Okay, neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave or free, neither, sorry, nor there is male and female, for you are all one. Hallelujah. 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 Are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then, my brothers and my sisters, you are Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise. So you are not anymore uh, uh, going to be excluded to become uh, that you are a Jew or you are a Gentile. No, there is no Jew or Gentile. As long as you believe in Christ Jesus, as long as you uh, receive Him as your Lord and Savior, as long as you are living with Him and in Him, my brothers and my sisters, you are now Abraham's seed. 
where the covenant has started. Amen. Are you getting my are you getting the point, my brothers and my sisters? That's why we are no longer separated to, uh, from Christ. We are no longer excluded from the kingdom of Christ. We are now part and we are now co heirs and heirs according to the promise to of to, to, to Abraham. If God will bless us and He will make us a multitude, because that's the promise of, of God to Abraham's and his lineage. Hallelujah. And we are now part of that because now. My brothers and my sisters, you, I know, everyone who is watching right now, I believe and I pray that everyone watching right now has already belonged to Jesus Christ, has already received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you believe that now you are Abraham's seed, you are now part of the family of Abraham, brothers and my sisters, can you please comment? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And number two. All right, let's see this revelation here. One body through the cross. What does this mean? Does this mean? Let's read in verse 15. By setting aside in his flesh the law with its command and regulations, his purpose, right? Take note. His purpose was to create him in himself one new humanity. That's what, what is the title of our message for this evening. One new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. So again, in the old uh, times, right? In in, in earlier, in earlier uh, generations, there were two groups of people, right? But now, Christ is has a purpose to create one new humanity through Him, right? If, if you know uh, this uh, thing here. There was the first Adam. And through the first Adam, sin entered humankind. And God has to do something about it. And He has to make a new man. But not from the dust anymore. He created, alright? He, he, he created a man in Himself, alright? Through, 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 through Jesus Christ, right? He is God. We, we all know this. He was, uh, He, 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 uh, became flesh, right? Because he is now the last Adam. And everyone who is uh, uh, born again through him in spirit, my brothers and my sisters, are now part of the new Adam. Where, when, where uh, the first Adam, sin entered humankind, this last Adam, Jesus Christ, entered life through him. We were all uh, saved. We are all uh, redeemed, we are all restored and renewed through Him. Hallelujah. Do you believe that, my brothers and my sisters, that we are now part of this humanity? What is the new humanity? That's in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, you are now a new creation. Actually, in other languages or other translations, it's not a creation that was used. You are now a new creature. It means you are now created as new humankind. Uh, in, in the spiritual form again my brothers and my sisters but that's like what we are reading earlier even the circumcision is not the flesh anymore it is in the spiritual thing that's why my brothers and my sisters did uh we have to to believe these words even though we don't see them because it is in the spirit but we in our spirit we know it is true and just like the Holy Spirit, we don't see Him, but we believe the Holy Spirit is there. We don't see God, but we believe God is there just as the air. We don't see the air, but we believe there is air, there is wind. My brothers and my sisters, I also believe there is a new you. Amen? Even though people doesn't see it right now, but I believe it will show up. It will, it will manifest in your life because you are now a new creation. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Amen? And in verse 16, it says, And in one body, right? To reconcile both, right? The Jew and the, the Gentile, both of them to God through the cross by which He put their, uh, He put to death their hostility. So God is for, is, is just not just performing a humanity. It says, In one body, or His body, to reconcile both of them to the cross, uh, to the through the cross by which he put that to their hostility. What is the purpose here? 
Because God is starting the church. God, Jesus Christ, is starting to build the church. How can He build the church if there is no unity in the man, in, in, in the humankind, in the people? If there is a division of them, if they are considered in two groups, that's why He had to reconcile the Jew and the non-Jew. He had to make peace in them so he could so that he could start to build the body of Christ which is us the ecclesia or the church of Christ hallelujah amen do you believe that my brothers and my sisters and we are not just now we are not just a new humanity we are now even part of the body of Christ hallelujah we are part of the new Adam amen and number three we have this one access by one spirit to the father we have an access right it is by the spirit of god he says in verse 17 he came and preached peace to you who were far right far away and peace to those who were near so he was trying to reconcile them for through him both right, you can see this both have access to the father by one spirit hallelujah so now, it is not just the Jewish people, it's not just the chosen people that can come and enter in the presence of God, in the throne, in the kingdom of God. Now, both have access, even the Gentiles, even those who are still uh, dead in their trespasses. But when they believe in Jesus Christ, remember, as I said earlier, there is no dividing wall anymore. Only what, what is remained, there is a bridge, right? A bridge that we can... Uh, uh, walk through so we could come to the father once more it is by one spirit that we can access this it is through the holy spirit by the holy spirit in us and through jesus christ we can come to the father hallelujah even though we were far even though we are near whatever it is even though we are gentile or non-jew everyone now has both access to the father by one spirit hallelujah are you getting my point my brothers and my sisters, are you getting excited with this uh, verses that we are learning? How how wonderful God is and how wonderful our uh, Creator is. Amen. So, in ending, Apostle Paul uses these concluding words and I will also conclude with these verses. Verse 19, okay, he uses a conclude, concluding words as well. Now, therefore, in conclusion, he says, you are no longer my brother and my sisters you me even though we were not a jew we were not born in israel you are not part of the family of abraham but now you are no therefore no longer foreigners and strangers but but says here fellow citizens hallelujah with god's people all right god's people the jews all right and my brothers and my sisters, he even okay, raised up the level. You're not just simple citizen. You are also a member of his house household. It means you are now part of the family. That's why he was calling us child, children of God. He was calling you a son, a daughter, my brothers and my sisters. You're not just simple uh, uh, a citizen. You're not simple uh, a person who is living in the kingdom. You are living in his household. You are part of the family. You are part of the kingdom of God. You are part of the church. You are part of the body of Christ. You are now reconciled with Him. There is a new person in you. My brothers and my sisters, you are now a new creation. Hallelujah. You are getting this. And it says in verse 20, Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, right, with their teachings, with Christ Jesus Himself and the teachings of Jesus, as the cheap cornerstones, all right? And is when you say build, all right, up on the foundation, remember, when you are building something, you have to have foundation, all right? The church is being built on the foundations of the apostles, of the of the of, of, of Peter and the other the apostles, Apostle Paul and others, and even uh, uh, and the prophets. And the cheap cornerstone, we all know, is Jesus Christ. Right? That's why in our church, we always recognize Him as our Lord. Amen. Because He is the chief cornerstone of the church. Amen. And in verse 21 and 22, it says, He says here, 
and in the whole building, my brothers and my sisters. Remember, the church is not the building, physical building, but we are considered this building, a structure, because we are uh, living stones, as the Bible is telling. I will share it er, uh, later on. Being joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Remember, there's also a verse is telling in in in, in First Corinthians chapter uh, six, verse nineteen, that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we are go together, we are just uh, living stones, building a bigger temple of the Lord in this uh, world that we are living right now. And in Him, you two are being built together with the Jew, right? The non-Jew, the Gentiles, and the Jew being built together to become a dwelling in which lives, in which God lives by His Spirit. What this? I as I end this uh, Bible study night, First Peter chapter two verse five, it says, "You also, as living stones, my brothers and my sisters." Again, the church is not about the building; it's not about the structure, but we are considered that building as the building itself, right? Because we are living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. This the church, a holy priesthood, right? To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. And it is now all possible because of the relationship, right? Because of all the reconciliation that God has done through His Son, Jesus Christ. We are no longer separated. We are no longer uh, non-citizens. We are no longer strangers, not aliens in the kingdom of God, in God's presence, my brothers and my sisters. You are now reconciled with God. You are now a new creation. You are now part of the family of God, part of the kingdom of God. That's why we have to live a, a life as if we are really living inside the kingdom, as if we are really living in heaven, my brothers and my sisters, as if we have Christ in our house. That's why, my brothers and my sisters, it's about time. It's about time to 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 to, to have this life of holy light to manifest this light because we have when you have this this knowledge this information this wisdom all right about these verses my brothers and my sisters it should change us it should it should uh uh make a a change of mind in us that uh, that that uh, now you know now now you know just just what in in the first series you are no longer dead you are now raised up with Jesus, you are in union with Christ. You are no longer even called a Gentile anymore. You are now part of the family of God. You are now part of the kingdom. You are now His Son and His daughter. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you are blessed this evening. Let's end and in prayer. Let's all close our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, Lord, thank you for this wonderful uh, scripture that we have study this evening and last week oh god we know that we were dead in our trespasses because of our sins because of our disobedience we were once cut off from you oh god we were once separated from you because we were sinners but through your grace and your love and through your mercy and by your son jesus christ we are now reconciled with you and Lord, we don't even consider it as Gentiles anymore. You don't see us as a non-chosen uh, uh, people. Lord, you call everyone right now. You have given them the privilege, Lord, this access, because you have destroyed that barrier, that separation from the uh, circumcised and the uncircumcised. You said, Lord, that anyone who belong to Christ is Abraham's seed and have this access to the promise, to the covenant that you have given them, O oh God. Lord, thank you for this privilege that you have given us. Even though we don't deserve it, even though we cannot earn it, you chosen us, Lord, you chosen to give us, to give it to us. And thank you for your great love for us, oh God. This evening, we just want to glorify you. We just want to to understand more of your word of God and to have this 
uh, in part of our life or that we will live as if we are inside the kingdom of God. That we will live as if we are really inside the house of in, in inside your house, O oh God. That we will live as if you are our Father, you are our King, you are our Creator, you are our God. Lord, thank you for this wonderful life that you have given us. This privileges, these opportunities that you have opening for us. Lord, we believe that you will bless us as you have promised uh, Abraham, O oh God. And we will become blessing to many people and you will uh, make us multiply. Lord, we will continue to share the gospel to others. We will let others know about your gospel, about your good news that we have a Savior, that we are no longer strangers, that we are no longer aliens in the kingdom of God, that we are now accepted through Christ Jesus, who offered himself as a living sacrifice for us. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for his resurrection. We have this victory of God. Lord, we just want to declare this evening that we love you. We love you so much. All glory belongs to you alone. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody will say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. I hope you were blessed. Good evening. God bless.